testing. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I hope the conference is treating you well. No conflicts, a lot of stuff done, right, I hope. Um, I'm going to be talking about a very controversial topic. I know some of you love the automation, bots, especially the chaos they create. I mean, we're all about chaos, right? So very briefly about myself. My name is Yuri. I, I, I con contributed a lot to Wikipedia. I contributed some to OpenStreetMaps. I'm actually the author of Wikipedia API back in 2005. Still regret it. I mean, still regret the decisions I made, some of them. But it helped a lot of people, I hope. At least I got a lot of complaints about it, so that means people are using it. So let's talk about bots for OSM and some of the stuff that I learned about bots in Wikipedia. I mean, the reason I did API for Wikipedia was because I was doing bots for Wikipedia, and page scraping is kind of difficult. I mean, when you try to edit Wikipedia and you use HTML page scraping, obviously you don't get very good results, at least very stable results. It works only now. Tomorrow it breaks. So let's get into this. The most important thing that any open source project can get is contributors' time. This is the most valuable because, especially initially, you don't have enough of it. You want everyone to come and join you and help you, but then, I feel like I'm getting feedback. Um, but then you end up with community spending a lot of time not contributing, but basically arguing with itself. And uh, arguing about all sorts of fun stuff and less fun stuff, and uh, the project kind of stalls a little bit. And then some contributors get upset and they leave. So the the background of this talk, I would like to I would like to frame it as, let's value the most the biggest thing we have, which is the contributors. You you basically everyone here uh, and their, your time. My goals has to be friendly. I know sometimes discussions get out of hand, especially on talk email uh, list. But I hope we can be friendly, respectful, productive, and understand that we're all trying to do something that's good for everyone, good for the community. We're all r running through some problems uh, that we're trying to solve. And bridge the gap between those parties that have different opinions. All right, I'll speed up a little bit, because otherwise you'll get bored. Um, data consumers is, in a way, our clients. We can argue with that uh, statement. But they're the ones who make the most use of the data we create. So their goals should be very low barrier of entry. They need to just jump in and use the data and be very happy with it, which means two things. They need to understand what the hell we created. I don't think most of the us don't understand what we created, so they understand even less. They look at the tags, and I'll go into some numbers very, very soon, and they're like, huh? So wait, I have to know the differences between different countries. No, not countries, counties. No, actually, this street has a special rule that you have to assume to know, because otherwise you won't understand the tagging that's used for that street. So there has to be a very clear contract between me, the producer of the data, and me, the consumer of the data. If, you do, if those two parties cannot talk to each other, we're wasting time. C point number one. And do as little as possible. I am lazy. I'm extremely lazy. I did not write these slides until this morning. Um, I kind of had some notes beforehand, but the slides were production of this morning. Which means that, by interpolation, everyone else is lazy too. Right? Which means that people want to spend as little amount of time doing things to get the result they want. Let them dedicate their time towards creating new value, not trying to understand what value we created. Contributor goals, flexibility. We hate it when someone tells us what to do. I do. I mean, you have to do it this way. Well, but I want to do it that way. 
okay? But you have to do it this, and uh, you get into conflicts over that. At the, at the same time, while you want flexibility, you also want the new users to be guided. You want users to be, okay, I, I am not very sure how to do these things. Tell me how I should be doing it. Guide me into that. And most importantly, we want to be valued. Our contributions have to be valued. Otherwise, it's like, why am I wasting my time? If what I say now is not valued by you, I'm wasting my time and your time. So it's whatever we do has to be valued by those who consume whatever we create. Guess what that top number is? Any guesses? No. Other guesses? No. This is the number of unique tags OSM has as of this morning. Speaking of contracts, we have to understand as a data consumer or as a data contributor who is doing, working side by side with you. I mean, someone living down the street from you needs to understand what the hell you just created. If they don't, if we do not communicate even between the contributors, how can data consumers even make sense of the stuff? Especially if they're on a, a tr like someone in China trying to create a map for someone in French who is visiting New York. That's the reality of our modern day world. We have to have to really work in a way in a global environment, despite having local knowledge. And if that's the number of tags, and there's a huge long tail for them. I mean, the graph looks spectacular. It's just a vertical drop, and then a very, very, very slow trickle, trickling of tags. Like one, two is the most for pretty much ninety percent of them. I don't remember the exact numbers here. So that, that's a communication breakdown. We don't speak the same contract language, speaking the API terms, uh, even in the same community. And the problem is we have negative data uh, net value from that. Because if I am a new person contribu uh, contributing or consuming data, I jump in, I see all these tags, and I start spending my time trying to understand which tags I do not need. Uh, like, I don't need most of them? OK. Well, I have to now do a full-blown research trying to understand which ones I don't need. So that's a waste of time. Or someone contributing next, next to you on the same street also looks at your contributions, see some weird tags. They need to understand, do they need to put it in as well? Sometimes they do. Or they're like, oh, that looks cool. That's a cool tag. I should just copy it. I'm not sure what it means, though. But it looks really, really neat. So as I said, I worked a little bit with Wikipedia bots. I have like 3 million edit, bot edits, 4 million, I'm not sure. Uh, that was back in the days when uh, Wikipedia languages were not connected to each other, in a, like using Wikidata. So basically, every wiki page in every language had a list of links to other wiki pages on the same topic. And whenever the new page was added, all the existing ones had to be updated to a link to the new one. And that's a wonderful manual task. People were, went ahead and just went through all of them and edited them. I mean, you can imagine how valuable that contribution was. Um, so that was a bot, which I uh, maintained for a very long time and ran. And uh, that was just putting those things in. Very, like an example of the task that you don't want your contributors to waste their time on. Bots caused a lot of problems, a lot. And I'm talking about Wikipedia, actually, not the OSM. I know OSM also had the same. But bots caused a lot of problems. Articles got co completely corrupted. Articles got injected en masse. I even have a graph here somewhere. Yeah, there, there's a wonderful graph. Thanks to me, who pointed to me. This is Wikipedia in the early days. Uh, someone called Rambot. I mean, anyone heard of it? Oh, just a few people. OK. So Rambot. Not my bot, uh, I promise you. Uh, just jumped in. These are daily changes. This is how many new articles got created per day. And created in one day of almost 2 million articles for like all sorts of small cities somewhere. 
I mean, that's kind of useful information, right? Especially for Wikipedia articles, except uh, as you can imagine, those articles, there was not enough people to actually work with them, to maintain them, to add something useful be beyond the da simple database import. Uh, reminds you of the, what is that called? Tiger import, right? Um, it interfered with editing. Bots got in fights with people. I think it should be this way. No, 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 you're wrong. This is how it should be, said the human. Bot says, no, 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 you don't know anything. I, uh, my, my bot master has told me to fix it no matter what you do. And uh, it got back and forth, back and forth. But it also solved many problems. Vandalism. If you blank out a page or do some swear words on it, it will get reverted without any person even looking at it. Quality control, minor fixes, spell checking that are very, very obvious. Things like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even sure of the extent, the scope of all the little things that bots in Wikipedia do. They, they became a transparent, uh, hidden thing that just makes art, keeps articles clean. They solved the tedious tasks, like the linking between different pages when that was needed and wasn't solved the other way. An important point, they also welcomed new users. Whenever a new user ca came to Wikipedia and made some change, the bot would automatically message them and says, this is so wonderful. You finally came to us. You can actually edit, as you've discovered. Now you can actually even look at the rules for editing. I'm not sure if you broke any or not yet, but at least like, take a look at those and you might find something interesting there. By the way, I believe OSM has by far better messaging system than Wikipedia does. Because when something, uh, whenever you change something, the mechanism of feedback is much more polished and I'm not sure if it's currently being used by bots, but it would be wonderful if, for example, a new user came in, edited something, and that change set would get a bot notification saying, this is wonderful that you made this change. Here are some wonderful links, but I mean, we appreciate you coming in. Or maybe some other mechanism to be discussed. I don't want to go into too many t specifics because people are like, no, this is not how it's going to work. OK. Wikipedia lesson number two, or page number two. Bots must be very easy to stop. Especially when it runs amok and starts creating two million pages a day. You have to have a very big button, and actually this exists in Wikipedia. You go to bot user page, and there's this gigantic stop button. You click it, the bot stops. Imagine the level of control you have over that thing. Anyone. You're like, I am the master of someone else's bot. I'll just cause chaos that way. OK. But it's easy to restart, too. So community must be in control. Bots, bots must be also very easy to create. If you cannot create a bot, you'll subvert it some other way. You'll start using uh, other tools for bot-like purposes. You'll start uh, doing edits and trying to hide them as bots. People are doing this. I mean, no matter how we say, no, no, this is not a problem. And I've never been to Alcoholic Anonymous, but I heard the very first thing they say you have to do is admit there is a problem. Clearly, judging by how many people there are here, there is a problem. We're all, I mean, we all have been hurt by bots, let's put it that way. Um, or we all think that something has to be done in that regard. So a bot author, someone who wants to solve a specific problem, should be very, should have a very easy path for them to start and start contributing. So these are, kind of important things. And uh, yeah, as I just showed you this lo lovely graph, which is, we can enjoy it again. This, I think this is the only graph I have in a presentation. As I said, I, I did this whole thing in the morning. Um, how can we improve uh, communications of concepts? That's probably the biggest pet peeve of mine. And I mean, I know Mapbox having these issues. Uh, uh, Wikipedia had these issues when we were creating maps there. Uh, it's pretty much any data consumer. I don't understand what you meant by this tag. Especially if, if in addition to that tag, I also have to analyze in which village that tag is located, because the meaning is totally different between two villages right next to each other. 
for example. I mean, I hope it's not very common, but that's the thing. Make reverts easier. Whenever people edit, they, uh, there should be a very easy way to revert. Wikipedia actually has this much nicer done than in OSM. You just go to history, click undo, save, you're done. You just undid this whole change that someone else did. Someone's not happy with your revert, they undo your revert. Uh, the, the, what is it called, the war of reverts? Uh, it goes back and forth quite often. But the point is it's easy, which means people are not as scared about bots because it's easy to undo whatever the hell the bot did. Pardon my French. And we need to increase the number of useful bots, something that actually adds value and reduces the time. Stop that. Uh, this is how you can contact me in case you feel this is important or you have some ideas or just want to work on this. And I would like to open the floor to discussion and talk. Thank you. Uh, any questions? <laughs> no question? Okay. Hi. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, as a contributor to both Wikipedia and OpenStreetMap, I think you're in a good position to answer this. Um, I saw a research paper a while back, can you hear me? Uh, I saw a research paper a while back that asserted that the, the number of contributions to Wikipedia started kind of flattening out around the time that they introduced uh, automatic revert bots for vandalism. And do you think, do you think that's accurate? Do you think um, it's related and do you think it's something we should be concerned about? And actually, I think Ming, who sits right next to you, might have some opinions on this too, because he, he has spent some time on this. Um, I do believe there is a connection there, or there might be a connection there. The question is, uh, there's valuable contributions and less valuable contributions. If the number of contributions, if, if you look at the total number of contributions, including the junk, and that junk got decreased kind of automatically, well, that's a positive thing. If, like, you have to go into a deeper analysis, and that's kind of hard to do. Uh, revert bots was all, also not perfect, especially in the beginning. They got, mm, ter uh, what do you call it, calmed down a bit, and they started uh, triggering less often. Also, with the addition of the new system, uh, the, the one based on machine learning, I keep forgetting its name. Um, what is it? Or? 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 Or, yeah, so I'm getting old, forgetting things. Uh, so with ORs, that's also a big plus. Uh, so that's, especially now with all the machine learning tools we have to our disposal, something that we should look at. But there's always gonna be, right now OSM does not have a problem of how few contributors we get, surprisingly. It's how many we get. So maybe it is time to maybe a little cap it, you know, not cap it, but like, uh, subdue just a bit to reduce the number of uh, incorrect edits, maybe. My opponent, official opponent. <laughs> Hello, I have two uh, remarks slash, slash questions. Number one, you mentioned uh, greeting new users as uh, simple and, and easy to do task for a bot. Personally, if I, if I sign up to something and I get an automated message back that says, welcome, we are so happy you're here. And I know it's not a human being that says I am happy, it's a bot, it's a piece of code that says, that claims to have emotions, basically lying to me. Um, it's not something that makes me feel good. It's you know because it's 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 the normal thing nowadays, right? You you uh, you you open a ticket with some say uh, some some website. You open a ticket, you get something back. It's so nice that you opened this ticket. We'll one of our agents will be with you shortly, and you know okay, this is just the standard bullshit that I get from bots. Um, so I'm not so sure. We we do you know we have some communities in OpenStreetMap where actual human beings actually take the time to send out messages. 
which are, of course, boilerplate messages, and they send the same message to everyone. But at least it's a human being that claims to be happy about my contribution. I think there's something to be said for that. All right, let's do one, one question, then, uh, then I'll uh, go in the, this, the first question, right? Um, this reminds me of the little problem Google just had. Hello, I would like to order a restaurant reservation. H anyone seen that video? Yeah? The, the new thing that Google did? And I would be scared, well, not scared, but pissed if someone, if a robot called me and pretended to be human. And uh, I'm sure many people have complained. Uh, you've seen that thing too, probably, no? Basically, Google created an automatic bot that pretended to be human while calling, and you cannot tell the difference. It speaks like a human, it behaves like a human. It's a freaking Turing test uh, passer bot, which is kind of scary in a way. Um, that is a problem. I do not want automated bot to say, hello, how wonderful you're here. What I do would like to get is, hello, here's some useful information that you can continue improving your editing skills with. If it's a boilerplate thing, does it matter whether it's, uh, it was sent by a person or not? What's important is that if I reply to that bot message, I want a human response. Maybe say, look, this is a boilerplate message, just like you get in many chats. Right now, you call like contact customer support for I don't know some airline, and there's an automatic header. What's your problem? And you cite the problem, and then the human answers tries to solve the problem. So maybe that's the solution. So to mix the two, on one hand, to provide the automatic boilerplate stuff, on the other hand, have a community welcoming. Hope it answers. And the second, the second one is you said that. Um, Information that is that, that doesn't have a meaning is is a is a net negative. Um, I wonder, either if say there's certainly a lot of information that doesn't uh, or say it, someone has contributed that information to OpenStreetMap and they meant to communicate some meaning by that. Mostly, it's just not obvious what the intended meaning was. Um, so either there's a way to automatically find out what the meaning was, then you can write a bot to fix it, but then you could also just, say, improve the Lua script in OSM to PGSQL to just you know, create the right database from whatever is in OSM. Or, or it's not obvious what the meaning is, in which case you need to basically go back to the person and ask them, hey, what, what was it that you wanted to do? So, that is exactly true. I actually 100% agree with you. Uh, the, whenever something is added, if you do not understand what it means, um, there ne it needs to be fixed somehow. Right now, there is no easy and uh, very common mechanism to do that. I mean, an example of a, a, a automatic solution would be you've just introduced a new tag or a tag that is almost never used. Could you go here and actually, or maybe even reply to this message saying what you meant by that tag? Because we think it might be a mistake. A Lua script uh, solution is not very good because of the time and laziness factor. I, as a data consumer, do not want to go through all the hoops of understanding any, each one of those 70, almost 80,000 uh, tags, especially because the very other, the consumer who is right next to me, who is also consuming it, will have to repeat my work. We don't want the data consumers to do exactly the same work, because if all of them are doing the same work, it should be done by one central place. So, amount of, um, and something that's not understandable is a negative value simply because it creates all these questions in the minds of other editors and in the minds of consumers who are trying to use it. And whenever they spend more time, it means they're not spending it on something much more useful. That's the problem. It's not that the data in itself is not value, but it's, it's that it creates more problems than it solves. So may, we should address it. I'm not sure exactly how. There are many ways. But it's, it's a problem. And Alcoholic Anonymous says that we should admit that there is one. Yes. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, Yuri. 
Oh, uh, we have well. no time for other questions, oh, sir. So, so, so. so I suggest I'll be catch up right out uh, there. with Yuri later outside.